by Francesco in Alti. And uh, I'd like to answer the question about open sourcing in our designs. So as you have heard, Alt is a parallel to a power processing platform that is very complex and it includes uh, a lot of features that makes it energy efficient. We also have a lot of software frameworks, we have a large uh, custom tool set, we have a very large number of IPs. And we all want to publish all of that, but it's a huge project. We don't want to do this all at the same time. So our idea is to um, publish uh, a small single core system that we call Pompino as a first step towards this ultimate goal. So what we're going to do is go back to the basic. Uh, you heard Francesco talking about how to build up. So how to uh, add all the multiple uh, caches and hierarchies and so on to build a uh, energy efficient multi-core system. I'd like to reverse exactly that and go back to the basics and just use one core. So first of all, we want just one one core. So we'll remove everything that is not strictly needed. Uh, meaning that we just have one core. And after that, we uh, also remove everything that was uh, needed for clustering. And we end up with a system that basically includes just uh, the core, the instruction cache, tightly uh, uh, coupled data memory, and some uh, peripherals. But we can go further. We can even remove the instruction cache. We don't uh, absolutely need this. So we replace the instruction cache with a simple instruction map with the idea of simplifying the whole system. We can also do the same for the um, data caches and the other memories, replacing them with a simple data array. So now taking a closer look, we ended up with a system where we have uh, just two RAMs, two single, simple single port RAMs that are accessible from the core within one cycle. We have an AXI interconnect that connects everything. We have uh, a bridge to an APB bus where uh, we connected all our peripherals. Then we have two more complex peripherals, the uh, SPI safe and the one debug unit, which uh, allow us to access the whole memory map of the Palpino from the outside. And the one debug unit also allows us to debug the core while running on ASIC or on FPGA. So, as you can see here, this system is much simpler than Pump and also has another focus. Our main idea with Pump was not to have something very energy efficient, but something that is minimalistic enough that we can share with uh, the community and uh, show what we built around our core. Um, we have already implemented an FPGA version of this, which runs on a Z board. Basically, we uh, implemented Pompino with the logic of uh, Async and connected via its peripherals to the processing system of Async, so to the two uh, ARM cores that are running inside the uh, processing system. Um, we can use the standard Linux SPI device drivers and the standard Linux uh, UARTs and so on to uh, communicate with Pompino, and we can also use those. Uh, simple peripherals, so they make the SPS later I mentioned before, or JPEG, by the advanced feedback unit to uh, put the program inside for people and run it. So those two peripherals allow us to start, stop, and reset the core and load any kind of program we want. Um, important to note is that we also plan to do the take out of this small system in uh, January next year. And this is going to be uh, UMC 65 nanometers, and it's a student project. So one of our students does this as a semester thesis to uh, learn how to build chips. Um, now talking about debugging. Um, I already mentioned we have uh, the debugging uh, units inside the small system, which allows us to interact with debugging on uh, a live computer system. In the current case, because we don't have an ASIC yet, this means we can use either RTL simulation or uh, FPGA to uh, test this. So how it works is that we have Linux running on the uh, ARM cores and uh, the sync. And all those Linux, uh, all those ARM cores, they run Linux and execute a bridge that drives the G or JTAC pins that are connected to the virtual computer inside the uh, the FPGA. Then we can connect with our um, GDB remotely to this uh, sync device and do the defensive debugging with GDB. So we have all the bells and 
proposals. Uh, as Francesco already mentioned, we have single step debugging, we have breakpoints, we uh, can access all the general purpose registers inside Polkido. Um, and we can also set the program type and call the Polkido to any kind of value you want. So basically, a full debug system. Can I ask a question? Yep. So on your JTAG scheme, do you have like a document which does uh, yes, we have to kind of document the documents. This this is also something we're going to share. Okay. I'll talk about this later on. Awesome. Um, then we also have software profiling running on Pompino using KCrash Uh Again, as in Pulp, we can capture instruction traces and include uh, performance counters. Um, for example, we have uh, instruction cache methods. In this case, we don't have an instruction cache, so it is always zero. Um, we have how many seconds it took to execute a load. For example, if you're accessing a peripheral, it just could be interesting. Um, we also have values for why there are uh, data hazards and if you are having a mispredicted branch and so on. You can then analyze this in your source code and see, or even uh, in the machine code and see exactly like, okay, those kind of problems always go wrong. So this helps you not only to optimize your uh, code, but also to optimize the core. Because you can actually see which kind of commands are where you have problems. Then um, talking about the, the risk five report that we developed for uh, this whole system. Um, it is something that we developed entirely in our institute as a master thesis. And our goal was to explore the risk five ISA. So to be able to compare it with our existing open risk CPU that we use for pump. Because of that, our uh, main focus was on energy efficiency again. And thus it has to be small and simple. And because of that, it is now in the range of the Cortex M4, both in terms of area and in terms of performance. And it is entirely written in this environment as the rest of the pump system. So talking about instruction set support, uh, we have the base 32-bit uh, integer instructions, the so-called RD32I, which uh, as first mentioned, contains everything that the base ISA agents, everything that uh, CP actually has to use for work. And we also implemented the modifications that are part of the M extension of S5. We didn't implement anything else from the M extension yet means we don't have any divisions and we don't have multiplications that uh, return the upper third into a bit of a multiplication result. Uh, we are currently looking into integrating multi-cycle divisions and microcode multiplications to, to add this, but it's not on our, our main focus because in the other benchmarks, this is not something that shows up all the time. We'll look into it, it's the only division. Then we also support compressed instructions. Um, we implemented the uh, RBC draft specification 1.7 and also uh, 1.8. And uh, yeah, basically, we saw, of course, smaller code size and less pressure on the instruction cache on the whole system. But the big drawback of this was that we now have to support 16 bit alliance instruction memory access, which is something that turned out to be quite difficult. Um, so, when we look at the pipeline that we use for our risk report, it consists of four stages. We have the standard instruction batch, instruction decode, execute, and write back. Memory access to data memory is performed during the uh, execute, where you send the request alongside with the address, and you get a response back in the write back stage and write back into the original purpose register. In the instruction batch stage, we uh, get our 32 bit words from the memory. Align them to, if we have compressed instruction, 16 bit boundaries, feed them to a compressed decoder, which is actually more a uh, compressed expander because it takes the 16 bit instruction and blows it up to be full 32 bits. Um, the critical path in our RISC core is currently in the instruction uh, access and the data access, and it's well balanced. So we are limited by the speed of the memories that we have. Uh, we also
also implemented some kind of uh, custom ISA extensions to uh, further get some speed up on the kind of benchmarks we want to meet to. Specifically, we uh, added register register local stores, meaning that the offset, which is typically encoded as immediate, can be also encoded as a register. This means that if an offset is either too big for immediate or not available at compile time, it can now be supplied by a register, which makes it a bit more efficient. Then we have also implemented uh, post implementing global stores. Those are global store instructions that increase the base register that is used for load on the store by the offset given by either the immediate or a demo register after the global store instruction has finished. Meaning we've used two instructions in two. <coughs> then we have other loops, um, which uh, take care of auto implementing the loop counter and branching at the end of loops. So basically, you get rid of two instructions. But you also gain uh, efficiency because uh, you can do very efficient branching. You uh, can anticipate that you want to do a branch in the next cycle, so you can already fetch the right uh, words from memory, align them correctly, and go on without uh, taking any taking any losses in performing branches. And we added uh, multiply cumulate, which is yeah, something very simple. Um, talking about the speed that we achieved with uh, our uh, RISC-5 implementation. Um, I have four bars here. Bar 1 k means the basic open RISC instruction set uh, executed on our Orion core that we uh, used for uh, Pali. Then we have uh, RISC-5, so the RISC-5 core. RISC-5 using compressed instructions. And uh, a Cortex-M4 comparison. Uh, As you can see, the, the risk 5 and the risk 5 requests are not, almost always identical, except in format. And there, compressed instructions are slow. And this is not surprising. It's actually surprising because it doesn't show up in uh, more other benchmarks. Because if you think about it, if you have a uh, good jump to an instruction that is 32 bits wide and unaligned, and you're having a 32 bit wide memory, you have to fetch two words before you can start executing this instruction. So, in a simple system where you have a single cycle access to instruction memories, the compressed instructions makes you slow. But on the other hand, when all of the source speed up using uh, compressed instructions. Uh, as you can also see, um, our RISC core is faster than our Orion core using the base open RISC specifications, and it's also faster than Cortex M4 in most benchmarks. This is all in the deposit. This is exactly what kind of code you're executing. Is that speed up um, relative to, to our one? Yeah. So up is good. Up is good. Yeah. Okay. In talking about area, we have uh, about 30.5 kilobytes for the whole core. This depends a little bit on the kind of technology you use and the kind of time constraints, but it's always in this area. And we see uh, a usage of 35% for the register file, which is 11.1 kilobytes. Um, the register file is latch based, which, is, which makes it a little bit smaller, and uh, thus within 35% is reasonable. So this is NAND, so this is NAND equivalent?
the instruction memory that we use is verbalized and only requests 32-bit white words. We cannot send any other line requests to it. Now think about the case where you have crossword instruction, meaning as 32-bit instruction that uh, crosses two instruction words. So it's the upper half word of the first uh, memory word and the lower half word of the next memory word. To uh, assemble a complete instruction from that, you have to save the upper half word of the previous match. So we already have to save 60 bits. Then, as soon as you see a compressed instruction from the lower half word of the instruction fetch, you basically don't have to fetch the next instruction already. Because if the upper, the, the upper half of this word is also compressed instruction, you would throw it away. So this is a problem. Because we, cannot, we cannot wait for a memory response to arrive because only the next request. So the only solution to this is prefetching. Saving the response that comes from memory for the next words always. And as soon as we do that, uh, we can basically do pre uh, input a prefetch buffer. And we hit that with uh, three entries. Turns out that two entries are not enough for two crosswords instructions back to get back. Because if you think about it, um, if you really want to, to break the critical path, so meaning that um, the instruction fetch should not depend on any kind of stalls having your pipeline. You can only do an instruction fetch when you uh, see that there is a free space in the pipe where you're using your assignment key. So if you have two back-to-back -back instructions that are busted, you would lose one cycle if you have only two entries. If three entries, this problem is involved. Now, uh, before we talked about pulp and uh, an L0 buffer that uh, caches whole cache lines, in our case, 128 bits. And now we have a prefetch buffer inside our receiver that also caches about three instructions. So, as soon as you think about this, you start realizing that it makes sense to merge it. So we now have to, uh, two prefetch buffer implementations, one for 32-bit wide memory access and one for uh, full cache line access. And as soon as you merge those, uh, meaning the L0 buffer, the prefetch buffer, you gain a little bit of performance and you remove one of the others. Uh, about the upcoming tables uh, of our risky core, uh, we have a tape out of uh, our cluster called Honey Bunny in uh, November, which will be the first tape out of this core ever. Then we have a tape out of the whole computer system in uh, January, which will be in UC 65 nanometers, and there are more to come. We are already talking about uh, where we can use this core and uh, what kind of cool projects we can do now. Then we want to release all of this as open source. What we're going to release is uh, namely the Propino platform, meaning uh, all the top level all your RTL code related to it, including also the FPGA build flow. We're going to release the risk 5 core that we developed as part of this, also including all the Propino IPs, which are identical to the other versions. So, uh, for example, the ASI interconnect, the peripherals we used, and so on. We uh, want to release the JPEG debug interface. Uh, with the corresponding software and drivers that we use. We want to release uh, all the, the supporting software that we have, for example, uh, our modifications to Kcash clients and uh, to debug bridges and other the tools that we use to develop it and uh, develop development and thought are useful. And also we want to release the free articles for it that we're working on. All the items we are releasing are silicon proven in multiple technologies, so uh, I hope you find it useful. The license we are going to use for this release uh, will be very liberal. We haven't designed yet. We are trying to align with a lot of low risk users, so yeah, we'll see about that. And we will do that very soon. So our plan for release is uh, in the upcoming weeks or months, but definitely before the end of the year. We are also interested in your help in uh, making the popular platform better and uh, extending it to, uh, for example, other FPGA platforms. Currently, we support only the Zap port, but if you also be interested to uh, the right and other sliding platforms or uh, LTL devices or whatever you have in mind. Then, also, we are interested in developing boards for popular ASIC that we can actually run this 
micro to control style A6 standalone. Then we already have worked on a port of three autos, which we're also interested to have other embedded operating systems running on top of the RISC core. Uh, we would be interested in adding more and more sophisticated peripherals and uh, to Palpino, and we would like to have help to uh, also double up software drivers for all of this. And also, if you have some uh, applications in mind for it, uh, tell us about it, and we can work something out. And finally, we are also interested in getting some help on compiler uh, support, because uh, you would really like to integrate more ISA extensions and evaluate where Windows can help us in the future and make our platform more energy efficient and improve performance. So, summary. Um, Polpino is the first step to release all as open source. The, the Polpino platform is a microcontroller-like system which uh, allows you to do, uh, test the RISC-E core in a minimalist environment. RISC-E is a small and energy efficient uh, RISC-V core which will be first taped out uh, very soon before the end of the year of 2015. So, also, giving a little bit of an outlook and so where we are going. Um, we also are looking into adding floating point support to our risk support. We already have a floating point unit that we use for our open risk file course, so this shouldn't be very difficult. Then we also like to improve production speed, because right now losing two cycles if the ground is taken is not very, very nice. So our idea was to just uh, add a branch prediction in the ID stage, which uh, cuts off one cycle for uh, right branch decisions. And we also want to look into branch target buffers, where we could add a, eventually eliminate branch releases completely. And of course, we are also always interested in evaluating further ISA extensions for our support. With that, I'd uh, like to close. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please ask. Awesome.